your headlines this hour. <clears throat> Courting controversy. The Formula One bosses say that they are going back to Bahrain. The Grand Prix there back on in the uh, 2011 calendar now set for October. Well, the Middle Eastern country was due to host the opening race of the season's F1 championship earlier this year. It was postponed after violent clashes between Bahrain security forces and pro-democracy demonstrators in which 230 people were killed. Well, the World Motorsports governing body, the FIA, decided to reinstate the race after last month's fact-finding mission to Bahrain. Before coming to air, I sat down with Dom Riddell, who's uh, one of the sports team here, and asked about the mood of F1's teams and drivers. Well, it's my understanding, Becky, that they don't want to go. Uh, the teams all had a meeting in Monaco last week at which this was discussed, and, the, and, the, and the, the word to come out of that was that they did not want to go to Bahrain. They're now faced with a decision where the sport has said, we are going to Bahrain on the 30th of October. I think it's quite telling that Red Bull, the top team in F1 at the moment, has released a statement today saying Red Bull acknowledges uh, the decision to go to the uh, Bahrain Grand Prix in 2011. We will go through the correct channels and discuss this decision within the appropriate form with the other F1 teams and our fellow FOTA members. So that seems to me, Becky, as though this is really the start of this story rather than the end of it. Yeah. What sort of recourse the teams and drivers have? Any? Uh, it's a bit tricky within Formula One. Um, it's going to be a real test uh, for the Formula One Teams Association mm. FOTA as to how united they can be. I think if all 12 teams can get together and say we're not going, mm. then that will be fascinating and they will have quite a lot of power. But if they can only get 10 or 11 teams together, they might as well not bother. How important is it for the FIA themselves that they get back into Bahrain and get things going again? Well, I think it's quite important for the future of the sport in terms of sponsorship, money. Uh, taking these races to these circuits is really where a lot of the revenue comes for Formula One. So I think it's very important that they are seen to be honouring their contracts, they're seen to be racing in Bahrain, and of course they have relationships and a potential future with, with, with the Middle East and the region. So I think it is quite important for the top tier of Formula One, but as I said, the, the teams don't particularly buy it, and especially not in, in this instance where you have, of course, a, a huge moral dilemma as to whether they should be going. Damon Hill has been quoted earlier on, uh, you know, as being absolutely against this decision to race there. And, of course, then we have the safety concerns as well. One of the reasons they didn't race earlier in the season was because they realised it would be a magnet for protests. And is that going to be any different? We've had people in Bahrain emailing and messaging the teams directly saying, please don't come, don't come to Bahrain. So if they do go... What's going to happen? And are these teams going to be insured? Who's going to cover them to actually go to Bahrain? So I think there's an awful lot still to be worked out. Well, even as the country lifted its uh, emergency laws this week, it is still cracking down on the country's major Shiite political opposition movement. Uh, street protests also are being stifled, as uh, we hear now from uh, one of my colleagues, Leonie Lakai. The reinstatement of the Formula One race in Bahrain comes amidst a tense atmosphere. People there are really eager to see their country return to some form of normality, but the reality is quite different. The Formula One decision comes as the government continues to crack down against an opposition movement and stifle protests. On Wednesday, the government lifted a state of emergency which was imposed in March, and the king invited all the parties to a dialogue in the coming weeks. But opposition and human rights groups say more than a thousand people are still being detained, including four members of Bahrain's largest opposition group, the Wafak Party. Now, the crackdown in Bahrain began in March, a month after anti-government protests swept across the country, leaving dozens dead. On the streets of Bahrain today, residents tell us it seems normal on the surface, but people are still very nervous. They say they're careful about what they say because they know they're being monitored and they know a crackdown is still underway. The Formula One race brings in half a million dollars and the government is eager to have it back in place. But amid such a tense atmosphere, the biggest concern will be security and safety. And that will be the biggest challenge. Leonie Lakani, CNN, Dubai. We are on the road back to reconciliation. That is the view of the man who runs the Bahrain International Circuit. Saeed Shalsa Yani told CNN's Alex Thomas earlier that things well, are different now. 
we chose to postpone the event and not cancel it. Uh, and now, having moved forward and things having calmed down in Bahrain and with the uh, lifting of the national security and the easing of the t travel advisories uh, from uh, foreign countries, uh, we are in a position to host the event again. Uh, the launch of the dialogue uh, by His Majesty, which was uh, done a few days ago, and it was well received by all members of society, including the opposition. Uh, for us, the Grand Prix is a, is a moment of national pride. It is an event that is welcomed and endorsed by everyone in Bahrain. Uh, we've enjoyed wide support since the announcement came out and even before when we saw the major opposition, even the, ev the major opposition party, al Wafaq issuing statements uh, in favor of having the Grand Prix back. Uh, it is a great economic uh, boost to our economy, which has suffered over the last few months. Uh, generally, we enjoy revenues of about half a billion dollars uh, from the Grand Prix, which are really uh, spread amongst different sectors of the society in Bahrain. So it's been a good day for us here in Bahrain and uh, we welcome the news. I don't think anyone would dispute how beneficial it is to Bahrain's economy, but you will know yourself, you only have to look at social networking websites to see that there are plenty of people in Bahrain who are not happy at this decision. What do you have to say to them? Well, equally, there are a lot of people who are very happy about the decision. Uh, I think uh, you, you will always have people on both sides. I think the, the majority is happy, by far the majority is happy, and uh, this is evident even when we, do, when we look at statements issued by the opposition. Well, you would expect the BIC chief to be pleased, even relieved, wouldn't you? But there are plenty of people who are frankly appalled at the decision. Activist Rick and Patel is the founder of the online campaigning network Avaz. Now, he is calling on Red Bull and the other F1 teams to boycott the race, saying their reputation will suffer otherwise. Well, he's live at CNN's New York bureau for you this evening. Um, you were looking for 300,000 people to sign up. You got more than that, actually. Uh, you're um, pushing towards 400,000. Why is it so important to you? Well, this decision to hold Formula One in Bahrain was really a kick in the teeth to the Bahraini people because we've seen just an awful standard of brutality set there. Uh, you know, today a young girl was killed. On Wednesday, they used shotguns against peaceful protesters in the streets. And, and when those protesters were wounded, mm. they couldn't go to the hospital safely because the regime agents wait at the hospitals and, and take not only the patients, but the doctors and nurses that treat them off to prison. Uh, this is the kind of brutality we're seeing. And uh, the granting of this kind of prestigious sporting event is, is an awful uh, source of legitimacy mm. for, for what's going on here. It's you know, Bahrain isn't fit for a holiday, it, let alone a, a sporting event like this. It's slightly um, unfair, isn't it, though, to uh, accuse the teams of, uh, of reputational damage, given that they, they are told by the FIA what they need to do and where they need to um where they need to race it's not up to them it's the fia not the teams the red bulls or the or the uh, or the drivers at this point certainly but i think you know sport has a great history of being able to drive human rights and, and concerns for democracy and sporting events and, and the kind of isolation we saw with South Africa was able to end apartheid. Mm. And there's a way in which, uh, you know, we've received a lot of requests and a lot of support for this campaign from within the industry. And we've seen veteran drivers like Damon Hill and current drivers uh, like Rob Weber really uh, push this, you know, say that they, that, that they support this campaign. So there's a way in which by pushing for the teams to do the right thing, uh, we're able to give strength to them to be able to to, to stay out of Bahrain and oh. uh, and to make sure that the the brands that are that are plastered all over their cars aren't covered with the with the blood of the Bahraini people. You know, this really is not a good uh, opportunity for sponsors to be uh, associated with this event. And I must put it to you that there are many many people in Bahrain and across the Middle East who do want the uh, Grand Prix. The hashtag uh, Bahrain wants F1 trending very much in the Middle East and uh, in Southern Europe today. And many people suggesting that this will be a cohesive event. Um, you know, I think that there's that there's support. This has been a, a great source of pride in the Arab world, and there are those that 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 want to see this event there. But what we've seen overwhelmingly is the position of the of the Bahraini people, uh, where they have come out, they have protested day after day, uh, and the calm that you see in the streets in some places 
shouldn't be mistaken for a peaceful calm. It's, it's, there's a, a type of reign of terror right now that if you protest, you're immediately arrested, you're immediately taken off to prison. And it's the kind of a seal of legitimacy that's given to that situation that we're really, we're really calling attention mm. to here. All right, so we're going to leave it there. We thank you very much indeed for joining us this evening. Interesting stuff, uh, Vaz, there. Well, you are definitely here talking about the decision to bring back the Bahrain.